everybody, how's it going? Coming at you all the way from Kiev, Ukraine. It is a Scott Elliott, creator of Guitar Tone Mastery. And uh, Scott's got something real special for you today. What's it all about, Scott? What's going on? What's new in Scottville? Well, finally, I have been able to do some massive updates to Guitar okay. Tone Mastery. The reason why that is big news is because everyone who is in Guitar Tone Mastery gets all these updates for free. So everyone who has been in my course for already, well, since 2020 and 2019, basically, it's all coming down the pipeline for them. So that by the time they see this video, it actually, they should already be watching the video. Oh, that's so. fantastic. Um, now, for those of you guys who don't know, I've only said this about 10,000 times. Guitar Tone Mastery is the only course I've actually sat down and gone through twice just because there's so much great information on it. I'm mean, like, I've been recording metal guitar for 27 years, something like that. And I even I learned an awful lot in this course because it's just jammed with so much useful information and Scott really knows how to teach. So what's new? What's exciting? Why should we be thrilled about this other than the fact it's on sale because it's Black Friday weekend? <laughs> Well, I mean, so a lot of stuff has changed. You know, when I originally did Guitar Tone Mastery, it was almost like it was a secret. You know, it's all about the cab IR. Well, you know, it's 2021 and it's not the secret anymore. You know, you mentioning it, Cole is no, mentioning it. No, 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 you're it. wrong, I mean, it's man. It's the vacuum tubes. One's brighter, one's <laughs> darker. This one has this tone. I this forgot. one has that tone. You're fucking wrong, I man. I spent money, I know. I forgot. Well, you know, then I'll have to put a video in for that. Okay. No, the point was is that that's cool, but it's still equally as important to understand microphone selection. So what I've done, this is a major part of the update, is I have taken a lot of time to discuss, you know, what's a dynamic? What does it mean? What's it sound like? And what are some popular uh, variants of, of dynamics that you can use? You mean there's something so other than an SM57? Correct. And and the point being that if someone says like okay I like that I like that SM57 sound, what does that mean? <laughs> is it na is, is it nasally? Is it warm? Is it smooth? No, no, and no. It's spiky, aggressive, and it you know. So you need. Hang, so hang on, hang on, hang I'm, on, hang on. Maybe you could explain what sounds warm to me. I uh, means because I've been recording, <laughs> we're making records for almost thirty years, and I still haven't figured that out. I think uh, a long, I don't remember if it was on the metal forums or not, but I think there was a forum that actually would censor the word warm because <laughs> it's because they're just like it's a it's a bullshit term. It really is. Um, I think smooth would be a better uh, word to describe there. OK, but smooth is not the word that you would use to describe an SM57. No. Right? Yeah, ice pick. So, I think Steve Vai used the term ice pick in the forehead. That's correct. But I mean, when you have that knowledge, so wh why would that be important? I'll give you an example. Let's say you have a guitar. It's got stock pickups mm -hmm. and the output is dark. Well, are you going to go reach for a condenser or a ribbon straight away? Why? You would want to pick a microphone that can basically balance your darkness with a aggressive spiky tone, which would be the SM57. So it would make your it would make your tone crafting process much faster. Right. Because you're not sitting there looking through a list of microphones going, hmm, which one should I pick? You can just go, nope, I have dark output. There, it's kind of it's kind of muddy. I need some high end. I definitely need a dynamic sure. of some type. Absolutely, and it's like yeah, fifty seven's bright, and then you got the four twenty one, which is somehow even brighter. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, but they're distinctly different because the oh, four twenty one, yeah. depending on depending on the pickups or the guitar, could have more body than what the SM57 can give you. And these are, this is very distinctive because if you like what the SM57 sounds like, but you're like, man, it just feels like all the lowing just fell out of it. Try a 421, maybe the body will come back. Right, just be careful right. where you place so, it because it'll tear your, tear your freaking eyeballs off. Absolutely, absolutely. So in that video, I go over dynamics, condensers, ribbons. I give examples of each. I give adjectives for how they sound mm -hmm. so that you can start to understand, you know, ribbon or whatever, ah. whatever the adjective and then even more so, I open up a session and I go, all right, let's start blending some microphones. So I will show in this video, here's what a 57 does, here's what a 121 does, and here's what they do together. You know, now you're talking about blending microphones. You're talking about blending virtual microphones. You're talking about working with impulses Correct. still, right? Yeah, okay. Right, yeah, and with impulses, yeah, right. exactly. So if um, there are a lot of IR packs out there where they <laughs> give you just like 50 IRs. Here's your SM57, you know, cap, off edge, three inches all right but in guitar tone mastery you learn how to read all that stuff and understand it anyway ah. but if, if you can understand how the microphones are 
what they sound like, and you have an IR pack that has a 57 folder, a 421 folder, et cetera, et cetera, you can use the exact same principles to be like, okay, I have a really bright, spiky tone with the SM57. I like that, but that spikiness is killing me. Well, you can take the 121, for example, and soak it. Mm -hmm. You know, just you move it around, and you basically, it's your first, it's your first mode of eq before grabbing eq and so you get the so you get the e you get the you look at your guitar you have to understand what kind of output do i have do i have active high gain whatever blah blah what kind of strings do i have are they dead are they bright etc cetera, etc cetera. then you go for the cab ir you go okay this is the tonality that i like because you have to ignore the resonances and all these things you have to be able to look beyond that then you go okay so I want to have a spiky tone, so let's try 57. Ugh, that's it's cool, but it's spiky. I want let's let's smooth it out a little bit. Let's try a C414. Nope, that's not good enough for me. Let's try the 121. Ooh, this is cool. So you've already shaped your tone with the first aspect of. Well, I just call it EQ, but I know it's a frequency curve of the microphone right. and how they're built. And then you're basically you get even closer and closer to where when you do uh, processing like Lasa Lambert. Uh, discuss he's like you can sometimes get away with literally just low filter and high filter cuts yep exactly i mean like some uh, some of my best tones have been that so i get exactly what you're talking about now do you have a clip you can show us here from your course sure. and uh show exactly what you're getting at and incidentally this is why you're going to see the ribbon microphone as a popular pairing to an sn57 now two popular microphones here are the Bear Dynamic M160 on the left, as you can see, and then the Royer Labs R121, which I've been discussing a, a couple times already. So for this particular guitar tone, if I was going to move forward with it, I would go with the 421 with the 121. So now what I would do, just, just so you would know in the future, I would disable this. I'm going to see which cap edge works best. So I'll mirror that with the 121 cap edge, cap edge, half inch away. And we're literally looking at a 50-50 blend here. There we go. Yeah, and once again, I mean, like, Scott's course was great because I, I love the fact that he doesn't just show you, oh, well, here's how it goes. It's like he shows you the why. Why are we doing this? Why are we look, doing this? What do we need to look for? Here's the why part. And that's something sorely lacking in a lot of other courses. I think that's absolutely amazing. Now, the other part you're getting into is hybrid systems. And uh, that's correct. I think I got, let me see what I got here. Is this plugged in? I'll find out in a second. <laughs> Believe you've got one of these as well. This is the, yeah, the, it's just off camera. Yeah, here. this is the Engel Iron Ball Special Edition, and it's got you know, it's got a IR loader in the back uh, for direct recording, or you can just take you know the raw amp out of the back because yep. it's got a power soak, and you can actually turn the speakers right off. And I'm seeing this on more and more amps, like the big Rev Generator 3 back here has the same thing, and you know it's it's what I call a hybrid system of recording, and I really like how this works because you still get the response of a tube amp, but you're not going to drive yourself insane trying to learn how to mic up a guitar cabinet because if you don't know what you're looking for, it can be incredibly daunting because it took me years and years and years and years and years to learn how to mic a cabinet properly and get the tone I was looking for. That's why my show's theme song is called The Eagle Has Landed because for me, it was my <laughs> moonshot. So this definitely speeds up your life. And uh, what did you find uh, once you started working with a hybrid system? The Yeah, first and foremost about that, angle i have the exact same one it's just off the camera so i did two videos on guitar tone master i did one with the xlr out and then i did another with the captor x system oh cool um to show the i mean it's not really much of a difference to just show like if you don't have a captor it's not a big deal you can just xlr out into your interface and you know use a third party ir in, in the DAW. it's not a biggie um the the thing with the the real amp at least with the angle at least with the iron ball is depending on the guitar you're playing it can be pretty dark right. so i have found actually that some of the things that i have to do like uh, this the systematic approach that i teach in guitar tone mastery i have to change a step like uh, with the amp i find that i do need to crank the gang a little bit to get a better understanding of what the tone is doing uh -huh. but i still have to, i still start with lead presence because i i need the amp to open up yep. for me 
I have to, I have to. And um, I also, when you, when you watch me do this, you know, it's really important to not look at the league presence and go, oh my God, it's on nine. I don't care where it is. I, you know, I want it to be where it sounds the way I want it. Right. You know, and that's all I care about. Um, the thing really that makes the most of the difference is I, I would say the fidelity of the sound, if I'm being completely honest. It's, a, it's an analog unit. It's a real tube amp. So when you plug into the IRs, there's a difference in how the IRs react, you know? So the EQ is even a little bit different. Like you don't necessarily have to do all the EQ that you would do with the amp simulator because it's moving, you know, the, the electricity, the information's bouncing in a different way than a perfect snapshot in time of an, of an amp simulator that's modeled. Mm. Uh, so I discussed some of the things that you have to do differently. And most notably, I do more dynamic EQ when I'm using the real amp. Because I find that it's not just a a pinned level of low band information. Ooh, it jumps around, it moves. Right, right. Oh, I so want to see I found this. That interesting. Yeah, I want I want to see this, but I'm very curious how you, how you treat things uh, with a dynamic EQ, especially for spikiness in the say the upper mids, that kind of thing. It was it was really interesting, and I will say, knowing how to dial in the amp simulators, it wasn't much of an issue. I mean, at, to technically speaking, because I'm a silly non-nerd about actual real gear i was literally asking adam all the dumbest questions <laughs> like okay how do i do this whatever how do i plug this in but when i got it working everything that i knew how to do with amp simulators no problem okay, i had cool. a tone within three minutes oh, it's 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 literally the same thing you just have to use your ears which is a classic now i'm saying it <laughs> use your ears <laughs> but i mean <laughs> But I just mean, use your uh, ears, bro. Now, when you have the <laughs> yeah, when you have the method though, uh, that when I say use your ears, what you know what the method is, you're like, okay, I get it. Yeah. And I really like it. And uh, any amps that I end up getting in the future, I will be putting them into Guitar Tone Mastery because the, this angle is really unique, and so is your Reb because it has that ability to just do direct out without the captor. Right. Um, any, I think there are a lot of amps where you need the low box and and all these things to use them correctly in the hybrid system. So I want to demonstrate that. Okay. I think I think that's gonna be where people are gonna go in the future because mm -hmm. they don't want to give up their tube amps, but they right. don't want to crank an amp at four o'clock in the morning. Cool. Sorry, just double checking here. Yes. I wasn't falling asleep. Oh, I wasn't falling asleep at all. No, no, of course. You can <laughs> feel free to cut it down. So anyway, um, we can. I can actually show you a pretty quick snippet of you know what I was doing um, in Guitar Tone Mastery with my angle. Please do. I really want to check this out. And that is the case. So everything is working well. Uh, obviously, that's not the sound we want to have. So we need to insert a plug in here. And I'm just going to go ahead and use the torpedo wall sound. Uh, I always get rid of stuff I don't need here, like I don't need bass, uh, I don't need online, I don't care. Um, and now I have a couple of different options here. I could go with the angle, but we've been using the angle quite a lot here. So maybe I will pick, oh, I don't know, let's go with some greenbacks, I guess. And what I'm doing when I do this is I just try to understand uh, what the microphone is adding or subtracting. So I have to turn it louder sometimes to understand what it sounds like. But then I, I sort of mix it in, like the levels that I would have. So I, you know, I'm mixing it in and getting an understanding of what I like and what it sounds like. So of all these, I like the 121. And that's a pretty good level, just about minus 12. It really doesn't matter. Now that I like the two microphones that I'm going to use, let's set up the distance and the center. So the distance away and you know where it is on the speaker. So now let's go through the tone stack. This is going to be exactly the same process, guys, that as I've showed you all through the guitar tone mastery. It's going to go lead presence, treble, middle, and bass. And with the angle here, um, when I'm working with the lead presence and the treble, specifically with the lead presence, I'm trying to find the part where the, the setting where the amp opens up where it doesn't sound like it's the, w w like your head is under a pillow or anything like that. And then I use the treble knob just to accentuate the high frequencies a little bit. I use the mids to basically scoop them all out because I like that particular sound. And I add just as much lowing as I think is necessary so the, the guitar doesn't sound weak or brittle or anything like that. And this tone is basically done. Let's make it any little better.
Anyway, so I mean that's the angle, but I, but the the other thing too about this update is I spent a you know because there's a, been a lot of amp simulators that come out in the last two and a half years, a lot, a lot of really good ones. Yep. So I, I updated all of the 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 demonstrations. So I mean they got the Lasse Lambert in there. I got the Granite Fire. I put Rhino in there. Oh, Rhino's amazing. Um, that's one I've of my got, favorites. You know, and it's very interesting too because some of these. Um, uh, amp simulators like for example the rhino it's got the built-in ir and by the way all the plugins i use the built-in stuff and oh, the lasse lambert built-in ir loader is spectacular awesome. yes losses is, is really tits really good. awesome i got to play through that angle cab in germany that was fucking amazing i'm like <laughs> fuck there's the sound why can't i get that out of my own angle cab Ugh. it's anyway. really good man mm -hmm. and it's it, it's so and like the rhino though it's because the plugin is designed differently. I just wanted to show that you can still apply what I'm teaching with a different plugin. You don't right. have to be in a rigid like where well, you need a pack of IRs to make this work. Right. No, you just you, there's a certain way you can do stuff. I got the Granifier. Um, I got the uh, Nimbrini Audio, the MRH 810s in there. Okay, cool. Um, the new the new Material Amp Box. I put that in there. And the thing too is I did a tone for the Euphoria, the U530. I've done and the uh, Reaxis, the Lasse Lammer. I went through all the amps. Did you do the uh, Did you do the Grindstein? Uh, that's going to be an update. Oh, ah, okay, cool. Because yeah, that's one of my also one of my absolute favorite yeah. plugins these days. That's just out of control. Because, that one. But it's good that you mentioned that because that talks about blending guitar tones. I made another video about advanced blending where you're using different cabs and amp simulators, mm -hmm. and that's actually a real life client that I'm showing. So I do this stuff in real life, guys. I'm not bullshitting you. I just don't sit here and pretend to do stuff. Okay. I, this is a real life client that is currently my client. So I'm showing you how I do this stuff in real life. That, so that's also really important because that's the next step, right? Once you understand the basics, there's nothing wrong with learning how to do this with an M M SM57 on a V30 Mesa. But after that, this is what you have to do. You start going, what if I do this? What if I do that? How do I blend the different amps, the different cabs? And then you start to find your own voice. And that's where it gets fun. Okay. And really interesting for me. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that I threw into the course. So all updated uh, tone demonstrations. And the, uh, yeah, tons of extra content. Um, also talked about tone considerations as far as your pickups, uh, tuning. Okay, because tuning is very important. And what kind of pickups you have are very important. Active EMGs versus passive stocks. You know, I talked about uh, why if you just go to a YouTube video and some guy says, yeah, put your bass to eight and he's got EMG actives and you're sitting home with stock pickups, that's not going to work out so hot for you. <laughs> uh, but I explain, I explain why, right? Because right. I learned that stuff the hard way, really hard way. <laughs> <laughs> so right but, um cool now you said you've got it you oh, i was gonna say now you said you've got a full mix for us here um kind of showing us how yep. you're applying all the stuff let's take a look at that All right, so that's Scott's new Guitar Tone Mastery course. Uh, once again, it's just adding on to the original. It's adding in on all this extra stuff. What's the total runtime on this thing now at this point? It's about eight or ten hours. It's up there. Okay, it's getting pretty serious. Yeah, but remember, it's not eight or ten hours of me just sitting there telling you what to do. Yeah. I'm walking through what I'm thinking about and what I'm listening for. So the whole idea is to help a person apply application you know it's didn't you love being in math class when they gave you a two plus two equals four and then asked you to solve for x for homework and that's i hate that shit yep you know so you start with the application and that's you know i don't i mean i'm not bragging but there are literally hundreds of people in this hundreds yeah yeah, yeah, over we, the course of the two years. Yeah, we've uh, you've definitely picked up a lot of people along the way. It's a phenomenal course. Like I said, I've taken it twice because I think it's great. Now I'm going to want to check out all your new stuff and hopefully steal some <laughs> cool tips as well and apply, apply it to my own productions because, hey, 
Um, the fool thinks he already knows everything, and the real student keeps learning no matter how old he gets or how long he's been doing something. So that's just kind of been my philosophy. Now, the important thing here is Guitar Tone Mastery is going for 97 bucks this weekend for Black Friday. So today's Saturday. It'll be on sale today and tomorrow. Then it goes back up to 147 once uh, once the weekend is over. So I'd highly recommend not missing out and grabbing a copy of this today while you can if you don't have it. Now, if you already do have a copy of this, you're already getting all these updates for absolutely free. And you've got a policy of free updates for life, don't you, Scott? Correct. Yep, yep. Now, uh, one other thing we want to bring up is that Scott's migrated over to Spectre Digital. So if you picked up Guitar Tone Mastery on another platform, all you got to do is show your receipt and you'll get yourself your copy over at Spectre Digital. No problem there whatsoever. So more than happy to bring you guys on board tonight. And you'll also get access to Scott's Discord where there's this community discussions going on and just generally people helping each other out, which is pretty fucking cool. Hey, Scott, why the fuck don't I have access to this Discord? I don't know. Why I have you never? Probably... Yeah, maybe I should drop by once in a while. Jeez, you know, maybe if I got invited, <laughs> I guess I'm not cool enough. I'm not cool either, so <laughs> I guess that makes the both of us. So, <laughs> no, right absolutely. Now. The Discord is awesome and is easily the best decision I made. Uh, I used to have a Facebook group, but Facebook sucks so much balls. It's you just can't. You don't get all the messages. No, you don't. I'll I'll log into Facebook and I'll get 17 notifications of messages that I mixed in the Spe Spectre VIP group. I'm like, what? How is this even possible? Uh, and it's like two, three days old. No, Discord is awesome. Real-time feedback. We also are Nitro boosted, so you can share big files and all that stuff. Oh, so. right on. Cool. It's awesome. All right. Okay, then. Uh, well, that's Scott's brand new add-ons for Guitar Tone Mastery. Once again, if you already have it, you get the free updates. And if you don't, like I said, it's only going to be on sale today and tomorrow. So grab it while you can. Thanks so much for watching, Scott. Thanks so much for being on this show. And I'm really Cheers. looking forward to checking out the new parts of it because I really like the way you teach. Anyway, that's it for me. That's it for this episode. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time. And get out there and make some metal, you amazing motherfuckers.